two years ago, where they lie. Yep. Uh, well, I don't really know much about it. Okay. Uh, it was um, it was um, it was in a garden centre. <coughs> as a, it's a tall, quite a tall tree, and it's spent a long time in the ground. It's chopped back. Um, where you can see the scars over, yeah. over a period of maybe ten years or so. Okay. It's a very nice natural looking tree. Um, but really, we've got one uh, major kind of aesthetic issue uh, that's kind of a bit um, staring us in the face a little bit. Can anybody point that out? Pardon? We've got one kind of major, major problem, aesthetic problem, uh, that's, that's kind of staring at us in the face. Just, can anybody say what that is? Two trunks. Two trunks. Yeah, I know. Two, two trunks across crossover. Yeah, well, let's just talk about it as a as a single tree, single single trunk. What you mean this one here? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, I say it's a very very sort of natural looking tree. Uh, I mean, this is how trees grow in, in nature. You go out and you look at trees growing in the park, growing out in the wild, and they look like this. Uh, sorry. A successful copy of how trees grow in nature, uh, and for you know for some people that's, you know, that's kind of what, what they're looking to achieve. However, when we look, start looking at bonsai as, a, as an art form, where we're, we're, we're trying to look at things which are perhaps more attractive than, than, than they are in reality, because not every tree in nature is beautiful. And so we should be looking to copy when we, when we say we should be looking to copy nature. Like nature is ugly. This is beautiful, it can be very, very beautiful, but it can also be very, very ugly. Uh, so what we should be looking to do is to try and replicate the most attractive aspects of, of, of nature. Look for those trees that we see in, in, in the wild where, you know, just by, by random chance, because trees grow, uh, if, if we have an infinite number of trees, we're going to have some of them, you know, the top percentage of them are going to be very attractive and, and such like. We should be looking for those where just, you know, the branches sort of separate off at ideal positions and we don't get areas that are where we have too many branches coming from one point that thicken up. Yeah, that's very, very natural kind of growth habit. That's not necessarily one aspect that we should look to, uh, to, to replicate uh, because it doesn't look quite so attractive. So when we're looking at this, where is our right line most drawn to? Which area on this tree? Where, where do, if you start, and this is how we should look at trees. When you see a tree on display or when you're looking at a tree, you should always look at it kind of in, in, in a certain way to, to really kind of appreciate it. So we should start looking at it from the pot kind of upwards. If you start looking here, there's no major problems with the barrier. It's really nice. Nice and spreading. It's a trunk tree then to say the trunk is strong, we? And we can sort of come up here. Right. Our eyes continue to go up here. Then which way do we go? Left or right? right. Both. Both a little bit. My eye goes here. Did you say so? And then where does it go? Stop. This is where we stop. This is where we stop. If we had a bit, if for example this was a little bit thinner, if we had less negative, uh, if we have le less inverse taper there, then our eye is going to continue up into the up into the tree. Okay. But because we've got so many sort of lines sort of, uh, going across purposes here, and because we've, we've got that negative taper uh, point to it there, we can't get stuck here. Because this is like the most powerful area of the tree here. All of this, this, this area here, in particular here. Okay, so this is something that we should be looking to, to avoid in the design of our trees from an early age. So this is what makes it so important to kind of uh, ensure that we don't have three, four branches all coming from on one point. Okay, so when we're looking at this maple here, <coughs> okay, we've got good separation here between this node and there. Then we get to here and we've got one, two, three, four, five branches all coming from one very, very sort of similar point. Whose tree is this? 
Okay. Right. Well, that, whilst that looks okay now, five, ten years down the, down the future, down the line, once we start, once that starts becoming mature, then we're going to start running into a, into a problem such as this. So this is where we need to, to kind of like nip those problems we reported earlier. Okay. So you should be looking to try to thin that down somehow. Okay. I think that's one of the problems if you, you, know, you put it in the ground and you're not looking at it every year and lifting it. And you forget for yeah. about a three year or two, it just, you know, it's hard to get it back again. One thing I often, you often hear is like when you, people have got like a problem tree, like what are you going to do? I'm going to put it in the ground. And then what? See what happens. I'll tell you exactly what's going to happen. It's going to grow like a normal tree. Because that's what it is. That's what it's programmed to do. Grow like a normal tree. Like I said, that's kind of, that's kind of what's happened. Right? And so, in you know, a field growing, people think that it's just a case of putting it in the ground and leaving it. But those trees that are still growing in Japan, they're still growing in China, in Korea, in Spain, they worked a lot. They're not just left there. They've gone back and they've pruned back and they've thinned out on a regular basis. There's a lot of work that goes into them, which is why they're so expensive. Which is why bonsai costs money. Because people have worked with them, those people need wages. <laughs> Is what people say, you know, people can often sort of fail to say, well, it's just a tree. It's not just a tree, it's a tree which has had a lot of manuals put into it in order to, to fix those problems. Okay? <clears throat> so that's what we need to, that's what we need to, to kind of stop happening from when trees are in early stages of development, such as this. Okay? So you need to go through there uh, particularly and, and focus all of your attention on, on, on this area here. Well, we've got many, many branches coming from there. Okay, so what, how, how, how can we solve that? Perhaps we take out the strong leader that's growing up here. Okay, in that case, and then we begin to develop the apex there. Or perhaps we remove this one. Perhaps you know, we need to figure out a way of solving that, that problem area before it becomes too much of an issue. Peter? Yes? You're saying that you're hiring that decision? Okay. How do we make that decision? Well, what we need to do is we need to look at the branch structure as, as we have it and find out which are the most attractive lines. Okay? And where we want the, how we want the tree to develop. Right? And figure out okay, which, which branches do, do, we, do we not need. Um, and then that kind of <laughs> tells you the branches that you do need. Um, so what you should be looking for is uh, 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 branches which separate nicely. So we've got some, some good separation between them. So as I said, we've got um, uh, a lower branch here. Uh, the next branch which comes up, you know, we've, we've got some good, some good separation between them. Right? And then they're going off in different directions. So you're looking at things which change, uh, which, which take the tree off in different directions. You don't want too many things going off in the same direction, in the same way. So you're looking for good, good separation forwards, backwards, left, right. Okay. We can we can often sort of change where the where the foliage ends, but we can't change where it comes out of the trunk. So you're looking for, you know, you don't want to take it back to the basics too much. Where you've got first branch, left, left branch, right branch, front branch, back branch. But really, those kind of fundamental ideas carry on. Do you want? What do you think is uniform? Yes. Do you want that? No, you, well, you don't. Yeah. <laughs> you, you don't want like you don't want it to be too uniform, and you don't want it to, to be too uh, irregular. It's kind of not a very difficult to say. If it, if, if it becomes left branch, duh, 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 then it becomes too man-made. It becomes too artificial. Right? But if we leave it to become too natural, then we can end up with, with issues like this. Right, so it's finding that, 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 that good balance between, between the two. And, and, and really what you should be looking for is to try and find the, the most attractive line uh, on the way up the trunk. Okay, so uh, in, in the case here, we should be looking here, and we come up, right, and then we need to look at the relationship between this branch and the main, the, the, the main trunk, and then this branch, the trunk, and then the next line coming up. So we're looking at the negative spaces in between the branches. Okay, so really, if we're looking to try, try, try to create a, a sort of spreading, deciduous looking image, then what we should be looking for are branches which are naturally coming upwards 
uh, and out from the trunk. Okay. So in this case, this one that's going sort of directly upwards with no movement in it is automatically looking kind of ugly. In, in, its, in its relationship to, to the other branches, which are all kind of moving out like this. Okay, so that's how we make our decisions. You look at the branches and how everything relates to each other. Okay, and you think, well, if, if that one gets removed, then how does those relationships change? Okay? Because here, the relationships between everything is becoming sort of very, very sort of confusing. A bit like my one, or what I'm saying going on. Okay, so that's what we did, that's what we should have been done. Okay, so we, we, we recognised that that should have been done earlier, got put into the ground and kind of got away from us. Okay, so when we were faced with a problem like this, how can we, how can we look to, to, to improve our situation? Hide it. What's that? Hide it. Hide it? Okay. What's one of the, what, what are the things about citrus trees? Hide it. In the summer you can't have water. What's that? You can hide it in the summer but not the winter. Okay. So, winter image is what we should be looking at. Uh, as much as the summer image. Okay, so summer image when it's full of leaf, that can be fine, and uh, we, we can hide it. Okay, but what we should be looking at doing is, is having a tree that we can display all throughout the year. I'm assuming that this has always been considered the front. Okay, looking at it from that side, it becomes slightly <coughs> less of an issue coming up here, okay, because we have this movement away from, from the from the view there, okay, takes us away, right, so, and this strong branch which we've got here is not quite so noticeable, it's perhaps looking out from that side, we don't notice it, notice it quite so much, yeah, mm -hmm. can you see that? Yeah. All right. Yes, the scar is more visible. Right. So this, this side was chosen as the front because the scar was pretty, very visible there. So we're putting the scar to the back. Okay. But from here, this, this, the relationship there works a little bit better. The Nabari is worse on that side. Right. This is always the balance that we have when we're, when we're looking at creating trees and all that. The other option is to perhaps look at removing this big strong Okay. But that's a big, big decision to make. Okay. <coughs> so I would have a look at this tree in uh, in the winter and look at it from both sides and see how uh, how you feel about it. And see what branches can be removed. Problems like this can be solved by uh, by perhaps root grafting in there. Uh, the other thing that I would do is to is to make sure that we've got one sort of definite apex area. Because how this has happened, well, we've got this very, very strong branch. This is, we've got areas which are competing to become the apex. This branch is trying to become the apex. This branch here is trying to become the apex. This branch is trying to become the apex. So we have these three areas that are all trying to compete to become the top of the tree. Right? Which is why we end up with these three, three lines of equal strength, one, two and three. What we should be doing, we should be doing with this tree in order so that we don't have that happen, is to make sure that we've got one definite apex branch, you know, one line of the trunk that coming up and becoming a definite apex, and we should be looking at holding them back on the other side. So this, the strong growth of this one here and this one here should be, should be pruned back a lot more. So look at pruning those back and, and allow this one major apex just to just to come become the more dominant area. Okay, and then that's going to stop that's going to stop that from, from getting any worse. As this tree develops over the future, then this is going to become a lot stronger. Five years down the line, this is going to be thicker than one and two. Right? So then we start to have a little bit more of a, a, a more definite kind of structure. Today. Okay, so the, the idea the idea was to stop that from happening. So earlier on, we should be looking to apply those principles to, to this kind of tree. Okay, that makes sense. It didn't sound like what I was talking about. Mm -hmm.